Okay, manufacturing. Now, my understanding, Dennis, is the supply of quality drainage products to site can still be problematic. Well, here we are on site. Now, you can design the most perfect round pipe you like, but when they arrive on site, Dennis, you've got to make sure they're all right. The quality can be sporadic. Um, the stuff that comes out of casting yards isn't always as good as we'd like it to be. And uh, it's important that we do inspect it. It's important that the uh, contractor or the supplier inspects it before they send it out. But it's not uncommon that pipes will get damaged in transit, even with the best will of all parties concerned. So it's important that the pipes are inspected when they're, when they're delivered to the site. Ideally, that's the, the uh, contractor's responsibility and his, con and his uh, quality system should ensure for a visual inspection of the pipes. But we also have our own people, the surveillance officers, uh, wandering around and looking at these things as well and doing visual inspections just to make sure that there aren't any serious cracks or spools or major defects in the pipes and the pits. Because we'll be getting rid of them. If they're bad enough, we'll be sending them back and how bad things have got to be is a matter of, uh, I guess, judgement. Specifically though, Dennis, when it comes to manufacturing, is there anything we need to know there? Yeah, Peter, R11 has got a whole point where the contractor is supposed to submit to the RTI site management team a whole lot of documentation relating to the quality of the precast product being delivered to site, that is pipes and pits. So it's really important that the uh, site team at least examine that information. But uh, as we've said before, probably more than that, they also need to come out and do some visual inspections of their own. Dennis, what if I'm inspecting a whole bunch of pipes and a lot of them are defect? What would I do? Can I, can I organise an audit? What do I do? We did have a situation where there's a lot of precast product being delivered to a site with a lot of defects being found. That's certainly one of the things that we would do. We would organise for the, primarily for the contractor. We've suggested he organise an audit on the precast plant uh, to make sure that they were following their quality processes and doing the right thing. Um, and we may even organise an RTA team to do that audit as well. Get the RTA team in. Get the RTA team in. <laughs> documents, Dennis. Now, I know it's important for the documents, particularly when we're talking about precast components. Yeah, Peter, essentially the manufacture and supply of reinforced concrete pipes is governed by Australian Standard 4058 and the supply of um, fibre reinforced concrete pipes is covered by Australian Standard 4139. And on top of that, there's some other requirements spelled out in the RTA specification R11. And box culverts? Precast box culverts need to comply with RTA specification R16. Now, some of the larger box culverts are actually designed as bridges and they need to comply with B80. Now, one of the safety nets, I suppose, complying with all these specifications are hold points. Let's talk about those because they're important, hold points. Yeah, Peter, R11 has got a whole point where the contractor has to provide a whole bunch of uh, documentation related to the supply of precast products to the site. Now it's really important that the RTA team at least check that and make sure that products do comply with the specification and the drawings. Yeah, before we proceed. Yeah, as I said out on site, it's essential for the uh, contractor and also the RTA site management team to be inspecting pipes and pits as they're supplied to the site, but also importantly before they're actually installed. So Dennis, is there anything else we need to be aware of at this point in the process? Well Peter, in the case of precast pits, they've been designed and certified by an engineer and so any on-site modifications to them also need to be certified by an engineer. Uh, what we see sometimes is some contractors seem to think that they've got licence to go and cut holes in pits or take out or even take out whole sections of those pits. Um, and that significantly changes the structure and the way it resists loads. The lesson there is they're certified for a reason. Don't go changing them without an engineer's certificate.